good morning everybody welcome back to my channel today i wanted to take you along a little bit of a journey where i kind of fix a little bit of these little indentation wrinkle lines um on my forehead which may not seem like a big deal right now but especially when i'm wearing makeup these leave indentations on um in my makeup so i wanted to just sort of take you along this journey of Botox and talk to you guys about Botox and um, have my friend and Nikki who is a nurse kind of talk you through it and what it's all about and um, that's pretty much what today's video is going to be. Botox is such a scary word to a lot of people and it shouldn't be. It's not at all a scary thing. It has sort of this like negative connotation around it for some strange reason and I wanted to just like inform you guys, talk to you about it, talk to you just everything, just everything. It's not freeze your face until you have no um, life left in your face and you can't move, it's not that. Let's, let's go in and see Nikki, let's talk about it and uh, we'll, we'll go from there. I'd like you guys to meet Nikki, Nurse Hello. Nikki. So if you guys don't recognize her, she is actually the nurse that did my lips. So there's an entire video on that. So if you want to check that out, we'll link that below. But today we're doing something different, completely yeah. different. We're talking about Botox. Botox typically is this very like scary word, I feel. And mm -hmm. and everyone I've talked to about about it has been like, you know, Botox. That's why you're getting that. You're so young. You don't have any wrinkles. You don't need that. hundred percent. But there's so much more to it, isn't yes. there? There's a misconception. A lot of people generalize fillers and injections as Botox. So Botox is something completely different. So it's a clear liquid and it's actually called botulium toxin, which is um, basically a protein that stops the contraction of the muscles. It's the only thing really to treat those forehead muscles, crow's feet. Um, there's a couple like cool things you can do. If you have a gummy smile, you can prevent the muscle from going up too much and showing too much gum. Mm -hmm. um, and you can also do like the bunny, bunny lines, which are those little lines kind of beside your nose as well. If you grind or um, clench your teeth a lot, you can actually put it in your jaw mm -hmm. and it slims it quite a bit because it shrinks the muscle there. So it's a quick injection actually just under the skin and it's a lot of people are scared that it's a big procedure. It's actually really quick. The product itself kicks in within a couple days to two weeks depending on the person and then it can last up to three to four months. So you get Botox because you either have these forehead lines mm -hmm. or, or, or everything you just mentioned. Yeah. Um, why am I getting it now? So uh, people would say, you know, you don't have any wrinkles. Why are you, why are you get, why are you getting Botox now? Exactly, that's a good, great question. So a lot of people say, oh, you're so young. Why do you do Botox? So people think, you know, you have to start in your 40s, 50s. No, I would suggest to start Botox at around 25, even in a small quantity. Um, that's about the time I started to do it. Just the key to, uh, with Botox is prevention. You want to prevent those muscles from contracting and creating those muscle, um, creating those static wrinkles at an early age, what happens is it atrophies the muscle, which means it weakens it. So as you get older, you'll never have that quite as strong of a contraction, which over time can create these lines that are really, really hard to get rid of. So a lot of the time I have these women in their 40s, 50s with these really deep lines and they're like, okay, I want one Botox treatment and I want them gone forever. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. So basically <laughs> what happens in that case, it's a, it's a little bit more work, but it is possible to get rid of them. So you do the Botox treatment to prevent the lines from getting worse and then you do things to treat the lines that are there um, and get rid of them. But it's a lot more work than just doing, preventing it in the first place. So would it be kind of like, you know, you brush your teeth every day so that you don't get cavities, whereas if you have a cavity exactly. already, it's very hard to get exactly. rid of the cavity. Exactly, right? so it's a matter of filling that cavity and then preventing it from coming back. Yes, so, so that's why we're starting now when I am a bit younger. Um, but you said like around 25 would kind of be the, the, the good age, right to age to I, Ideally, I have, I've actually had like 22 year olds come in uh, with static lines already, whether mm -hmm. it's their natural anatomy or just, you know, lifestyle and stuff like that. But um, definitely when you're at a younger age, it's easier to kind of bounce back as well if you already have static lines because you have a lot more collagen and elastin in your skin. Okay. As opposed to when you're older, you lose a lot of that. So. Okay. So my other like big question, which I, I read like all the time and anytime I bring up Botox to people, it's something that's brought up too is like, well, I don't want to look like, you know, the movies, how they kind of make Botox have to be. You can't move your face. Oh my God. Something about Mary. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about that. Like, why is that a thing? Will that happen to me, et cetera? Yes. So I'm very, very, so a lot of the thing, the biggest thing with Botox is planning. So it's the assessment. Um, and that's how you prevent any contraindications, any 
you know, ptosis or too heavy of a, of a treatment. Um, so I always start, especially the first time with anybody, I start with the most minimal amount possible. So that way I can see how they respond. I can kind of ease them into it because it is a little bit of a different sensation at first, not being able to move those areas mm -hmm. as much. Um, so I start very, very low to see people's response because you can always add bo more Botox very easily. Um, you just can't take it away. So that's the only thing. So people, you know, I've never had anyone come and be like, Nikki, I feel like it's yeah. too much. I feel like yeah. I can't move my face. No, if anything, people come in and they're like, I want a little bit more. And I'd much rather that because it's so much easier because like, you can't really take yes. it away. Okay, and then so, like, do, do you have to do Botox to the entire face, like everywhere? Like, am I going to be able to move my face at all? Like, <laughs> A hundred percent. So, um, generally Botox, for today we're just going to do like frontalis, corrugators, procerus, which is this area. So people always say forehead. So that's this area. Some people come in and they want just between the brows. And okay. a lot of people over time, you know, just from that squinting kind of, you know, yeah. blocking the sun, get those, they call them 11 lines. So you get those little lines there. Some people start off treating that. Um, but I really encourage people to do the frontalis, which is the forehead, because it doesn't take a lot of Botox to make it really smooth and shiny and that gives you like that really wow effect. Okay. Um, another favorite treatment of mine is the brow lift. Um, everyone loves like the Gigi Hadid, yeah. you know, lifted brows. Yeah, just by doing a little bit of Botox in the tails of the brows, you can lift it up a little bit, giving her like a really refreshed, uh, pretty, a weak look. Okay, well should we get yeah. started and kind of just Excited. start the process? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're about to get started. We've pinned my hair back because we're gonna be working in this like forehead area. So what is the first step? First step is cleaning. So I'm gonna use this chlorhexidine swab. Okay. Um, it's like kind of like an alcohol, a little bit more heavy duty to get rid of any germs on the face. Tasha's a good client <laughs> because she came without makeup on. So a lot of the time, um, it's a little bit extra work when you come with like a lot of makeup on because you want the skin really, really clean before we inject. Do you suggest coming without makeup for kind of every procedure? Everything. Okay. Yeah, it just, yeah, like, yeah, I mean, we just want the skin as clean as possible. Okay, so that's clean. So now I'm going to be doing my assessment. So okay. first I'm going to get you to um, frown for me. So see how she, you're not very strong there. Um, so this is called the Perseris and these are called the Corrugator. So I'm just going to treat the head of the um, Corrugators. I don't treat the tail just because I find she doesn't have a, a lot of movement or static lines there yet. And it will give you a little bit extra movement, okay. which will make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Okay. Now I'm going to get you to raise your eyebrows. Your lines are, aren't very deep, but they're small and kind of scattered. So I'll do, you know, a couple, like maybe about 10 units throughout here, just kind of scattered. So one thing I'm very mindful of is where this little arch is on the brow. I always mark that off. I've never had a brow ptosis and I don't want one. What's a brow ptosis? So it's one of the one things that can go wrong with Botox. So. Basically, if I always go a centimeter above this little line mm -hmm. because Botox has a diffusion rate of one centimeter with the dilution that I do. Okay. So if it goes um, too close to the brow, you can get a heaviness. Oh, okay. So I've never had that happen. And it's yeah. just, like I said, with Botox, the biggest thing is just planning. Okay. Because the injection itself is easy, but it's just planning it out to give you the best results. Question. So mm -hmm. if someone comes in just for forehead lines, would you still... Would you still do there? Yeah, so you always have to, you can treat just this area, okay. but you can't treat just the frontalis. Okay. Because what happens is um, they're antagonist muscles, so if you just treat here, I'm gonna have to clean this again because I'm touching it, but <laughs> if you just treat here, it's a lifting muscle, okay. it's a levator muscle, so if you treat that, it'll actually get heavy. Okay. So you need to treat this, because it's a depressor, to lift it up and uh, counter counteract each other. So by doing this, basically I won't be able to do, to do that face that makes those lines appear. Happen, yep. So when those lines aren't appearing as often, yep. they're not they're not getting deep. Yeah, so when you prevent that contraction from happening, sometimes we can do a little bit, like you still have a little bit of movement, but you don't have that scrunching of those yeah. muscles. So over time, yeah, raise your brows again. Over time, when you lose, right now you're young, you have collagen, elastin, you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Your skin bounces back from doing that. But over time, you'll lose that. And your skin's like an elastic band. So think of an old elastic band when you, when you pull it, it gets all wrinkly and dusty and it yeah. snaps. Yeah. So over time, you're gonna create those, um, those lines. So we wanna prevent that from happening. So Botox is preventative, you guys. <laughs> you're not doing it because you're full of wrinkles. You're yeah. doing it because you don't want to be when you're you know, 50, 60. And also what happens is you just smooth those underlying muscles out when, when this happens, when you treat it. 
and you'll just get like this beautiful shiny glow so your makeup goes on really well you actually have less oil production so you don't really get breakouts so like you know you know those how sometimes the, your makeup will like sink into those lines if 100%. you make that expression too much and then your makeup is just like stuck like yeah. that that's what I'm trying to prevent because I'm really tired of having those lines on my forehead and you don't need a primer or anything like that to fill it in it's just super smooth um, yeah and if we do a brow lift today I think that'll be really pretty just to lift your um your brows up just a couple of millimeters mm -hmm. to give you that really pretty lifted look amazing because it's all about the brows <laughs> always so we're going to start ejecting um it's not in a deep injection i actually just need to do it under the skin and it will actually absorb into the muscle so i'm going to get you to make those faces again for me perfect yeah so this way i can actually just relax a little bit so i'm going to get right into the head of the muscle there I'm doing a very small amount in this area. Frown again, hun. In the head there. Just 15 units. And turn towards me a little bit. Perfect. So it literally just feels like a pinch. Just a pinch, and it's done in a second. I like always it's... tell people it's comparable to getting your eyebrows tweezed. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's just so Just turn your head towards me. So now we're doing the brow lift. And I always measure it from the outside of the nose, the out outer campus of the eye. And right at the area of the eyebrow, about an inch outside of the orbital bone. So this again is really about mapping out the anatomy in order to get the best result. All right, so we're almost done. Oh, and all these, so these little red marks, sometimes you'll get a, like a little bleb of, of the um, Botox, like a little bump. So that'll go away within 10, 15 minutes. Okay. And the redness as well, I'll give you a quick wipe and then that will go away within 10, 15 minutes and no one will ever even know what happened. Okay. So raise your brows for me, which is staying away from that brow. Turn towards me a little bit. Just under the skin. Cause she goes a little high, I'll do two units up there. And that is it. Whew. Sometimes you get like a little eye water, like I said, just like that area is a little sensitive. Yeah. So be careful not, I'm being careful not to move the product too much because I, I place it specifically into areas of the muscle. So this is the biggest post care for Botox is about four hours after treatment. Try not to touch the area. Try not to sweat or lie down or work out just because we don't want to move where I specifically place it in the muscle. Okay. So after four hours, you can go on with your life and expect to see results. Um, depending on the person, depending how strong your muscles are, usually first treatment takes a little longer for it to kick in because the muscles are stronger. Okay. Um, the more your muscle, the more you do treatments, the more it at atrophies, the quicker it kicks in. So I would, I always say a full two weeks. Okay. Okay. For anybody to, to see a hundred percent results. Okay. And at that point we can get people back in and top it up if they want a little bit more. How often would you suggest coming in to get Botox? So dep again, depending on the person. So some people like if you work out, I, I, you're very active or you're very expressive. Mm -hmm. I find the muscles fight the Botox off a little bit faster. It's not okay. even that you metabolize it. Like that's more hyaluronic acid. It's more your muscles fight off that um, protein from acting on it. So those people I would say about three months. Okay. Honestly, anywhere from three to six months. I have people with really weak atrophied muscles that can stretch it out every six months. So it's twice a year treatment. Um, we even have like a new payment plan where you can do a monthly payment of a smaller amount and then every three months you're due for 25 units um, just to keep people kind of accountable and keep them on top of it. Yeah. Because some people get so busy with their yeah. life, they're like, oh, it's been a year, my muscles are fully, you know, yeah. strong again. Yeah. And we don't want that because then people have to use more product yes. and you know what I mean? It's playing catch up. It's really important to stay on top of it. Um, keep it a routine and it'll just become a part of your, you know, like getting your hair done, your nails done. Um, and the thing is, it works. It's not like a cream. Creams are expensive. Like yep. this, you do this treatment and your lines are gone. So there, yep, your redness is, your little blebs are gone. Your redness is almost gone away. No bruising. Come on your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Come on your lunch. Hi everybody. Today I'm going back to see Nikki. Um, it's been about a week. And so we're just going to do like a little check-in on how everything is like going. I think it's going really well. I think, you know, we don't have all the lines and 
all that stuff. So I'm very happy with that, but we're gonna go check in with Nikki now and see what she thinks and just kind of talk about what's happened, what's going on, and uh, seeing the difference. Personally, I think that there has been a lot of uh, shape difference in the brows. I feel like these brows are much more arched. I feel like there is no lines in the forehead like whatsoever, which is amazing. But I feel like the brow little lift she gave, holy heck, I f my brows are normally like quite straight across. I really feel like they've been lifted a ton. Um, my brow shape seems to be completely different. You know, I, I see my brows every single day, so I kind of know what they, what they, what they're all about. So. I thought I would just share that little update, but let's go see what Nikki thinks. Okay, so I'm with Nikki now, and we're just gonna talk about, she's just gonna, I just wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think? I, the brows are amazing. Incredible. Yeah, so your lift is beautiful, and again, I'm just checking it out. It's very even, symmetrical, because sometimes people, you know, naturally, if you have um, uneven brows, we could actually correct it with the brow lift by adding a little bit more on one side to raise it more, but mm -hmm. perfect uh, symmetry between the two of them and just a beautiful glow. So I'm gonna get you to raise your brows. So very limited movement. You're not having that contraction of the muscle and mm -hmm. I'm gonna get you to try and frown for me. So perfect, so you are you still have a bit of movement. Like that's why I didn't, I didn't do the tail of the mm -hmm. of the corrugators like I, sa I said I wasn't going to. So you still have a bit of movement around the eyes so you don't feel stuck Which or is frozen. good, yeah. Yeah, it's nice but it's not, you're still not getting any contraction of the muscles which are gonna cause lines. Mm -hmm. So to me, Perfect. I think perfect yeah. glow. I'm not gonna add any more. I think it's just the perfect dosing for you. So when you did the brows, mm -hmm. where did you where did you inject? So for the brow lift, um, so again, the biggest thing with the brow lift is just putting it in the in the right area. So I always line it from the outside of the nose, outer campus of the eye, and about one centimeter above the orbital rim, so right about here. So, so you have to measure that out because some people are like, oh, it's the tail end of the brow. Mm -hmm. But some people's brows, like yours, comes a little bit further than that. Some people's will come a little bit shorter, so that's not really a good um, way to landmark the anatomy. So if could someone just get the brow lift without oh, doing, yeah? Yeah, okay. so you could, you could treat in here in the brow lift without treating the frontalis, but you can't just treat the frontalis of the forehead if you don't treat this area here. I mean, it looks amazing. Yes. I look, you look like, I look like a wide awake and like <laughs> just glowier and dewier and. That's it too. So even if you don't have like a lot of lines, it just gives you like that really smooth, shiny glow without like makeup on, you're like a little doll. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, we'll it's see. fast and yeah. it's good. And it looks, fast. It, and it's a big difference. Yes. Yeah. Hey guys, uh, sorry if it's a little bit echoey. I am currently in my new house and I just sort of moved in. I wanted to film the update to this video, so excuse the echoiness. It has officially been four weeks, so not only did I want to do this update, but I also wanted to just touch on a couple questions that I thought you guys might have. Botox can help with a lot of different things. I listed this earlier in the video, but like I said, gummy smile, jaw slimming, uh, brow lifts, wrinkles. The second thing that I always will get asked is cost. So uh, Botox is typically $9 a unit, so it depends on how many units you're going to get. Are you going to do your forehead? Are you gonna do here? Are you gonna do your brow lift? Are you gonna do your jaw? It adds up that way. Um, but I think that Botox is very affordable. They obviously will have like sales throughout the year and things like that. Um, and you should follow Nikki on Instagram so she, you can like be up to date with all of that. Nurse Nikki is quite literally amazing. The most professional, most like meticulous, talented at this, she does amazing work. I would not trust my face with anyone else. So if this is something you're thinking of, highly, highly, highly recommend Go check out our Instagram. Uh, I've linked everything down below. She's just amazing, truly. I can't say enough good things about her. But most importantly, I wanted to give you guys like a four week update. So Botox has definitely kicked in by now. Mine kicks in very quickly um, within like a couple of days. But um, I wanted to just sort of show you somebody looking up at the camera. So let me give you guys like a full eyebrow lift. So you can see I still have like movement. I'm not expressionless, you know? <laughs> so funny. Um, but there's no wrinkles. There's no lines. So those lines not appearing so often 
they are less likely to be really deep wrinkles when I am older if I keep up with Botox. And then even here, still have my movement. Just, just no lines there either. When it comes to the brow lift, <sighs> the brow lift was amazing. It worked really amazing on me. Again, it's always going to be different if your muscles are stronger or if they're weaker. But for me, like I see an insane lift, like insane. Like I always used to hold my brow to be like that. Um, I feel like if anything I could use maybe just a tad there, so I don't even know. Maybe, see, like, mm, I don't know. I think they're pretty good. Um, but I've seen like a really crazy difference with the brows. So if you have sort of like really straight brows and you want more of an arch, I like, especially for the price, I'd highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, like a major difference in my personal opinion on the way things are looking and the healing process was like nothing it was like i had nothing done as well so obviously there's going to be some time where i decide like is this what i want to do for x amount of first you know the x amount of years or whatever um but like, i feel like my forehead is like shinier and glossier because there's nothing settling into those lines and even if you didn't notice it on me, like I would constantly notice it. I would constantly be like touching up my forehead and stuff like that. You know, it's your body. What you want to do with it is up to you. I, I just think, you know, a lot of people in these sort of videos get like shamed for their whatever, um, which I think is kind of ridiculous because now that you know that I have Botox, it's easier for people to shame, but like, if I never made this video or told you, you would have never known. So I just think that it's crazy that we're trying to like normalize something and people still will always find ways to hate, but I'm very happy and I think um, it's your body. If there's anything that you can do to feel more comfortable in your skin, I don't think that there is a problem with that. So anyways, that's my update. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that um, I've made it seem like much less of a scary thing because it truly, truly, truly isn't. Anyways, that is it for me. Back to uh, making over this house. <laughs> Bye, guys.